Testing, testing, can you hear me? I am, I have no idea how to share the screen. <laughs> Start sharing screen, launch, install. Oh, I don't have it installed. Let's see. Let me know if this works. Can you hear me at least? Can you see? Thank you so much, Anka. Welcome, everyone. Nice to be here. Beautiful sunny day in Manhattan. Hi there. Hello, Sean. Some old names in there. People have been following me for a while. Well, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about three things required to be a successful trader. So, uh, as Anka was saying, you know, when you start this journey and you want to uh, trade, and obviously the goal of trading is to become profitable, a lot of people begin and they start out and they lose money when they start out. So. Oh no, I don't, I don't, let's see. Can you hear me now? Let me know if you need any assistance, either Alyssa or myself, and let me know if we are both here. Can you hear me? Testing. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, not so loud. Can you, can you tune, tune it up a bit? Oh, let's see. There, can you hear me better now? Perfect, awesome. <laughs> the mic is yours. Okay, I'll try to talk loudly. That'll be easy for me. <laughs> Anyways, can everyone see the slide? Is it big enough to see and can you hear me? Good morning, good morning. Okay, great. All right. Very well. Welcome, everyone. So my name is Melissa Armo, and I own the Stock Swish, and today we're here to talk about three things that you can do to become a successful trader. Obviously, you're starting this journey, and you want to make money in the market, and that's the reason that people trade. However, many people, when they start out, fail. They lose money. Why? Because they're not prepared for really uh, the focus that's required to become successful in the market, all the things that they have to think about, a strategy. We're going to talk about some of these things here today. So if you're interested, this is me. Um, you can watch me in Fox Business, Fox News, CBS News. I'm also on talking about the market. And, you know, I very often talk about the fact that if you're in the market long term right now, the market has been holding the uptrend. We've had a very bullish start to 2019. I believe it continues. But the markets are very volatile right now. You can say news. You can say this. You can say that. But the fact is that volatile markets, though, mean if you want to become an active trader that you have opportunity. You have huge opportunity to make money when the markets are up and down and up and down because as an active trader, you can short and you can go long, okay? So if you'd like more information, you can always reach out. Email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAT. So how can you become a successful trader? Because obviously your goal, if you want to do something, you want to succeed. And I, I you know some of you, I recognize some of your names in here, Sean, Philip. You know, if, if you're trading right now, and you're not successful, I think it's good to take a step back and say, okay, well, why? What, what is the piece of the puzzle here that I'm missing? 
there's really no golden nugget necessarily in trading where it's just one thing. It's never really about one thing. Some people say, well, I'm failing because of my discipline. I'm failing because I don't have enough money. And if I could, if I could risk more money, then I know that I'd make it. If I, if I just had more money to do it, not necessarily, okay? You can make money if you risk $50 a trade. You could turn that money over one and make $50 a day, and $50 a day is what? It's $250 a week, and $250 a week is $1,000 a month, and many people are not making an extra $1,000 a month in the market. They're losing that or more, okay? So if you're not succeeding, take a step back. The market's gonna be there tomorrow. The market will be there June 1st. The market will be there in the future. You don't wanna keep bleeding money if you're losing. And it's very important to take a step back, reevaluate, and actually we're coming into a holiday week, a holiday period. It's a good time to take a couple days off. I'm personally, I'm taking some time. I'm not even gonna look at charts for a minimum of four or five days, maybe a week. It's good to just step back and reevaluate are you on track for your goals for 2019 financially? Are you doing what you need to be doing? Is this even what you want to be doing at all? Okay. Or maybe you're not trading and you're thinking about diving into it and you're trying to evaluate all these things. You're bombarded by all this information and you're trying to figure out, okay, is this something that I think I might want to do? Well, we're going to talk about that today too. Okay. So anyways, what three things do you need? Can, can you, my sounds going in and out? Can you hear me? I'll try to sit a little bit closer to the mic. Is that better? Okay, good. So what three things do you need to be a successful trader? One, you need a winning strategy, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Two, you need a mentor to follow daily. Definitely makes it easier for you rather than hanging out there by yourself in the wind, okay? And three, motivation. I have no shortage of this for my, myself and my life, but unfortunately I can't bottle up my own personal motivation and sell it and give it away. If I could, you, you'd all be rich, okay? So motivation, which we're gonna talk about at the end, is really something that comes within you, okay? But it's certainly something that you can find in, within yourself, okay? that even if you're not motivated at all today, even if you've had hard times and you're feeling down and depressed, you can turn that around and you can turn it around in a split second, okay? And that is something that is fully on you that does not have to take a long time, okay? So let's talk about number one, a winning strategy. This is very important. It's interesting, when I found out about trading, when I found out about the market, it was 11 years ago, and I always thought that you had to go to school and if you had to be in finance, you had to work on Wall Street to make money in the market. That's not true. That's not true at all. With today's electronic trading, you can live anywhere in the world and as long as you have a brokerage account and an active setup where you can plug into the internet and get live price times and take trades with your active account and see charts moving in real live time, you can trade. You do not have to live in New York, even though I do. You don't even have to live in the United States. You can train the U.S. stock market and live in Africa if you want. So it's a great thing. So there are many people that are interested in trading the U.S. market simply because of the reason I talked about at the beginning. The market's very volatile. You get big moves, momentum, and there's lots of money in the U.S. market. And that makes for good trading. Again, you got to get it in the right direction. So talking about one of the prime things that you need, you need a strategy. So my personal strategy is gaps. I only do gaps. It's one of the reasons I've called this market so accurately because I'm reading the gaps in the market. Now you can say, well, there's support, there's resistance, there's this, there's that. I have a lot of moving averages here. Well, not a lot, but I have a few here on this day, day chart. But ultimately, you can't just buy support and short resistance in a market like this. Now, although April 1st through, I mean, uh, January 1st through April 30th, 2019, pretty much if you bought every support level in the market, you made money or strong stocks, but that is not the case normally, and that's not the case since May 1st, and it will not be the case between now and the end of 2019. So a strategy is something that's not just buying support and short and resistance, even in following the trend of certain stocks. It really has to do with looking at price action, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at price action and a gap, and not only that, I'm looking at it and predicting where it's gonna go in the pre-market. 
which the pre-market, the U.S. Open has a pre-market and a post-market. So the market opens at 9.30, closes at 4 o'clock every day. Now, what does that mean? It means that any stock that moves or trades that go off after 4 o'clock and before 9.30 a.m. are happening in, you know, many, many stocks. Okay, we don't trade penny stocks. We trade usually stocks who you would know of. And again, I say the market, but this is the S&P ETF. But they're happening overnight, and who is making trades overnight, or who is making trades in the morning? Who's moving stocks like Home Depot, which gapped down today and is now rallying? Who is doing that? Well, sometimes it's individual traders taking positions in stocks. Sometimes it's big funds, big banks, big traders with big size. And when they take positions in those after hours, they create something that's called a gap. Now, I'm gonna show you, this is very basic here, but I'm gonna go over this today. What is a gap? So a stock gaps when the difference between the close and the open is a different number. It could be as different as a penny, all right? But that doesn't mean if it's a penny different that I'm trading it. But literally anything that's a difference between the close and the open is considered a gap. There are stocks that gap up, there are stocks that gap down. Now we're looking here at the SPY. This was back from last week. So this is Sunday, this was Friday into the Monday, the market gap down May 13th, and we had a thrift off here this day. So on this day here, this was the Friday, the SPY closed at a number, whatever this number was here, 268 and change, boom, open in the morning, oh no, the, yeah, that was two, no, it was 286, I'm sorry here, no, 288, 288 and change it was, sorry, I have it so small. And then we opened down here around 282 and change. So we gapped down $6 plus overnight from Friday to Monday. So this was 4 o'clock. This is 9.30. So what I do is I see this in the market, in the pre-market before 9.30, and I rate it using my strategy. And again, a strategy is something that you follow specifically, do not deviate from, and you use it to determine what stocks you will trade each day, what time you will take them, and in what direction. It's not like you're just looking in it casually into the open and trying to determine if something's a long or a short. So I'm determining if something's a long or a short before the market even opens. And not only that, what stocks I wanna watch. It doesn't mean I'm taking a position before the open, but I'm determining which ones I'll like before the open. And that really helps you, okay? Um, somebody has a question here. I'm actually Melissa. Anka is going to be on a little bit, I think, later, Ahmed. Um, will you buy only when a gap is up? I, I am looking at always rating the gap per my system, okay? If you want to look at a gap up, we can look at a gap up here. Here was a gap up in the market. This was back at the beginning of April. The market closed here, gapped up. The market closed here, gap down. So this is a gap up, this is a gap down. I will only look at the direction the gap is going to determine what I'm doing with it. So for example, if I'm gonna go long, I'm gonna go long and gap up. If I'm gonna short, I'm gonna short a gap down. But I'm not shorting every gap down. I must be clear on that. I am not shorting every gap down and I am not going long every gap up. I go through a system, a strategy. That's what we're talking about here. Reviewing what a gap is is only a part of it. The rest of it you would learn in my class, which is an entire weekend, 16 hours. It's a, it's a checklist that tells me that the gap is going to hold. Hold meaning hold the gap itself, whether rally or drop. And so, therefore, you can look at gap ups and you can look at gap downs, but I still rate it because I'm not going long every gap up and I'm not sure I never gap down. Home Depot is a great example. Home Depot is a perfect example. I talked in that in Chatter TV today. Home Depot gap down but it wasn't a short however i wouldn't have gone long it okay now i'm not saying if you're in home depot for the long term if you're in that stock if you're long the stock as a swing trade i'm not saying that it's not a good buy but i wouldn't buy that stock today okay make sense so anyways we're just talking about what is a gap right here we're not saying how to do it that's in the class but i'm showing you that i'm focusing only on gaps and nothing else. Although I do prefer to look at gap downs, I do look at gap ups. So either one is fine. And I'm also very focused on the first time of the day out of the open. First 30 to 60 minutes in, into the open is a very important time of the day. It's important for the market. It's important for stocks. That's where you get a lot of momentum and movement. You could just trade the first 30 minutes of the day and make money and quit every day and just set an alarm off at 10 a.m. Eastern time where you just stop trading. You literally could do that uh, because most stocks have big moves in that period. 
And the ironic thing is that many, many day traders don't even look at anything or even trade until after 10 o'clock. They're scanning for the first 30 minutes and then they're looking to get in things at 10 or later. I'm usually done by 10. That's not a rule that I kill something at 10. Baidu was a great example. Baidu fell all day yesterday. You could have played it all day. But, the, but in an ideal world, we do get in and we get out quickly. Okay, quick means really between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. So what I focus on and one of the most important pieces of being successful or becoming successful is you have to have a strategy. You have to have a system, okay? The system that I utilize, I created, and I'm looking to predict the direction that the stock's going to make for the whole day, whether it's up or down. I'm also looking for a big move on the day, preferably, preferably, okay, the bigger the move, the better, the more money you're going to make, okay? I'm also looking for early confirmation of the bias, and that means between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and I'm looking for precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-reward target potential, and we're going to go over some of these trades here today. But, you know, you don't really know until the stock opens what it's going to do. So I have an idea where I think I want the price point to set up. But again, I'm not trading in the pre-market because to me that's a little wild. And you really don't know what a stock's going to do until after the open. You also have more volume on the open. Even though there are many, many stocks in the market is one of the things that you could look at. And you say, you know what, there's enough volume in the market, in the pre-market sometimes that you could trade it, okay? But that's not something that I focus on. I feel that there's more risk associated with focusing the after hours or in the pre-market. But my process is I get up in the morning and follow my system. Boom, boom, boom. I don't deviate from it. Again, this whole entire system that I do, I teach in my class, but I'm telling you, and what I'm trying to say to you is it's based on gaps which is something very specific. It's way more specific and detailed than just looking at support and resistance. And while support and resistance have their place in the world of trading, okay, specifically in technical analysis, it is not the be-all, end-all. And this market has been choppy since May 1st. And, and in fact, it's a great example why you have to be more specific about the choices that you make than ever before. I'm talking about right now and pretty much through the summer and possibly we could see this volatility go into the end of the year, okay? So while it may have been very easy from January 1 till April 30th to, to trade, specifically if you were long strong stocks of the market, that, is, that was not normal, that was an abnormality and it's not gonna be that way this summer and it's not gonna be the way, this way at the end of the year. So if you wanna be successful, you have to have something that you can do all the time. That's something that you can use no matter what the conditions of the market are. Whether the market's higher, whether the market's lower, whether the market's rallying, whether it's dropping. You want to be set up so that you can be successful no matter what the market's doing. And not only that, no matter what the trend of the market is. So right now, like I said, the market's in an uptrend. Even with the drop-off we had in December, the market held the uptrend. But if we had fallen, it wouldn't have mattered. Either way, my system is something that's applicable in any market conditions, which is why it's so important to be aware of the fact that when you're trading, you have to see what's going on in the sectors. You have to see what's going on in the markets. You have to see if what you're doing is going to be affected by anything else. We live in a time in a world that's very interconnected right now based on social media. You have the President of the United States that sends a tweet and stocks can fall off a cliff or the market. You need to pay attention to what you're doing. And one of the reasons that I like gaps too is because of the fact, you know, that we're not in them that long. Now again, Baidu we're going to talk about in a minute. And that was a trade that lasted all day. But in an ideal world, in a trade and out, boom, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then whoever tweets, whoever does anything at all, it doesn't really affect anything. We're out. We're done. Okay. Someone's asking a question about Reddit server articles and gap, gaps eventually filled. That's false. If we have time, if we have time here, I think I have till noon. If we have time at the end of the presentation, Dan, I will pull up my charts and we can talk about that. Um, gap fills do not work. It's not part of my strategy. Although there are times when a stock will push back and look like a gap fill, it's really not. That doesn't work consistently as something to use in the market to make money. And in fact, it's very dangerous sometimes for people. Actually, if we have time, we'll talk about HD because that's one today that reversed. And that, people could say, well, it filled the gap. False. So if we have time, I'll try to see where we're at here. I think, what time is it, 11.20? I think we'll have time to go to my charts and we'll look at HD because that's a good example. It's a great example, actually. But remind me, I'll, you remind me of that when we get in, into this a little bit here. 
Anyways, the point I'm trying to make about one is, number one is to be successful, you have to have a strategy and it's important because you wanna make money. <laughs> and if you don't make money, then you're not gonna be in this game long, okay? Hard to sustain yourself and do this for months and weeks and years if you're losing. And I mean, who, you know, then it becomes emotionally debilitating too, where you're funding a losing endeavor for yourself. And who wants to do that, okay? That's crazy. So it really is about the consistency. And so focus, focus, focus on the consistency. So how do you make money in the market? Consistency in the strategy. You have to have a strategy that has a high win ratio. You have to know how to apply it, okay? And it's about the focus on one thing. So I'm focused on one time of the day, one strategy, which is gaps, the rating system, which again is what I teach in the class. And this is a nice career if you've been thinking about doing it because you can work from home. As I said earlier, you can live anywhere in the world. Now, if you don't want to do this as a career, if you love your job, okay, or if it's something where you just want to do it on the side for extra money, that's fine too. You don't have to, you know, throw your whole life into trading. Again, going back to the example of 50 bucks a day, if you made $1,000 a month, that's an extra $12,000 a year just for something you're doing for the first half an hour of the day. That doesn't have to be your career. It's just extra money that you could do something on the side and maybe it will develop into a career for you later. You, you never know, okay? You never know where the future can take you. You absolutely don't. I say keep your options open in life and stay focused on the prize. So one strategy is key to be successful in the market and mine is based around gaps, but it's really based around institutional money and gaps. So I'm looking for institutional money, okay? And I'm reading the price action. So what is price action? It's called price forecasting. I'm forecasting, I'm predicting, okay? I'm predicting, in fact, I'm predicting the market is probably not going to go up and make new highs anytime soon. Low odds, okay, that's what it's about, it's about odds. It's not ever about 100%, if it was about 100% then we'd risk all the money we had in every trade that we would take. I would have risked my whole account in Baidu and it would have been a fabulous day. It was a fabulous day anyways, but you don't risk all the money you have because not every trade works. There's risk associated with trade. You forecast, you look at the odds, high odds or low odds. So when I look at a gap and I use my system, if it reached 20 points or more, I say high odds. High odds is this gonna work. Low odds if it's under 20 points. Low odds the market makes new highs soon. Soon means the next couple of days and the next couple of weeks, okay? even though the market today is rallying. And actually the market today gapped up, all right? So let's talk about price, price forecasting. Forecasting is the use of historic data to determine the direction of future trends. Businesses utilize forecasting to determine how to allocate their budgets or plan for the anticipated expenses. It'd just be the same thing as if you had a business and you were running a business and you have employees and you have to buy products and you have to plan their hours and you have to have payroll and you have to pay the suppliers. You have to plan all of this out. You have to forecast it. Are we gonna have enough money for this, this, this? All right, we gotta open the store in this time. We're gonna close it on this time. Are we gonna sell this many products and goods and services? You need to look at all these things. And when you're trading, you say, okay, I have a goal. My goal is that I'm gonna risk $500 and turn it over one. My goal is I'm gonna risk $500 and I'm gonna make $500. My goal is I wanna make this much money a week, okay. My goal is I wanna make this much money a month or a day, okay. I always say it's good to, I call it chunking it out, but that's a good way because a lot of times people come and say, oh gosh, I, how am I ever gonna make 200 grand a year doing this? I don't even know, that's just so crazy of a number. Break it down, okay, break it down for yourself because not every trade is gonna work. So you have to look at it as a whole and you say, okay, with this many trades loses and this many win, then how much do I have to make per trade in order to achieve the results, okay? So it is about price forecasting and reading institutional money. And, and that's what, we, we, if we have time, hopefully we will, to bring up that HD chart because the reason the gap fill, the gap fill thing is a fallacy and it does not work because you know, ABC hedge fund in, you know, downtown or in Midtown, in Midtown Manhattan is not looking at a chart this morning or any morning at all and saying, well, let's see, let's, let's buy this stock today to fill the gap. That is absolutely not what they're doing. That is not how they think they would laugh you out of the office if you even talk like that or wanted to go apply for a job there. Okay. You, 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 that is not the right way to think. Okay, people that are trading and moving stocks and big money is where you wanna be on the side of that big money and they're not doing gap fills. They're not doing gap fills at all, okay? So you have to think and act and, and read the price 
as if really you are running your own little fund. It's your fund. It's it's Dan's fund. It's Alyssa's fund. It's Ahmed's fund. It's your own little fund. Now that fund may have two thousand dollars on it. That fund may have fifty grand in it. It's whatever whatever you have in your trading account. But the goal is you're going to build that fund. But you think like a person that has a lot of money if you want to get there. You know you whatever that movie is. Build it and they will come. Okay, you have to have that kind of mindset. And again, this goes back to the success aspect of it. If you were running a business and you wanted to be successful, you wouldn't just, you know, run out and say, well, I'm going to start a business, but I have no idea what I'm going to sell. Well, that's the whole point of trading. Trading people run out and say, well, I'm going to trade. I'm going to make money in the market. I don't have a strategy. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, what strategy I'm going to do, but, but I think I'll be successful. No, you won't. You will not. Okay. Just like you won't open up a business and there's no point of running that storefront and doing anything at all if you don't know what you are going to sell. What is the purpose of the business? What are you doing? Okay. You have to know what it's about, why you're taking the train, have a specific strategy. And one of the biggest mistakes that traders make is they think, they think that they have a strategy. I talk to people on the phone, but they don't. They say, well, I buy support and doop -a -doop -a -doo. I buy the eight period moving average or whatever. Well, that does not consistently work. If it did, it would be so easy to trade and so easy to make money. And as a result, guess what? no one would make any money, okay? Because the very essence and the idea of trading is that every time you win, you're taking money away from someone else. And that's why the smart rich people are making money at the top and they're making a lot and everybody else is at the bottom. And it will always be this way from now until the end of time. And that kind of thinking about the gap fill fallacy thing actually makes that even more so in many other fallacies, which we don't have time to talk about today because I only have an hour, okay? But as, a, as one person in the market, you can be successful, but you have to think big, okay? And you have to think that you have a lot of money and trade like you do and like it's very important and that someone gave you $10 million because you wouldn't want to lose it. You understand? Now, let's look here at a gap. This was a gap this morning. This is a gap that I just clipped this. This was the pre-market. This fell out of the sky. It was KSS. And this, again, gapped down. So here's where it closed last night. This is KSS over here, around 63 and change. Boom. Gap down, fall up a cliff. Boom, boom, boom. Again, here's where it opened. So it ended up opening like 55, whatever. Okay. But the stock ended up gapping down. But here is the movement. I'm showing you this. We're talking about gaps in the pre-market activity. So here you have it. This is what? This is a big, fat, red bar. Okay, so this is this is a lot of selling here. And that's how the stock got down here by the time it opened because it closed all the way up here and it opened all the way down here. You say, wow, how did it get there? Boom, it sold off like a banshee, okay? and But this all happened and I'm showing you this here before 9.30, all right? So then here is the live day. This is a one minute chart. Again, one minute chart close of KSS up here at four o'clock, boom, gap down in the morning. Again, here's the open. So I don't have the data over here, which I just showed you. So I take it off. I mean, you can keep it open if you want. Anyways, boom, here's the sell off right into the open, rallying, boom. Could have shorted it again here. This is a short. You short it here, you short it here. Okay, so there was two quick shorts in this. Again, when? Before 10 a.m. Eastern time, here's 10 o'clock. You could have shorted it here, stock price dropped. Could have shorted it here, stock price dropped. Okay, I don't know where this is right now. But two trades in this KSS this morning if you wanted to short it. And again, you see this here. This was all the gap that's happening here or did happen in the pre-market. So sometimes stocks gap at night, sometimes they gap in the morning. Uh, I forget what's out tonight. I looked it up. Urban's out tonight. <laughs> Target is a big watch. That's tomorrow morning. Those are some, some names that I'll be watching. I don't know what they're going to do. And again, you don't take positions in anything until you wait and you see what it does. Okay, but those are two names that I'll be watching between this, tonight and tomorrow morning. Anyways, let's talk about Baidu. Baidu really has been the gap of the month here for the stocks for show live trading room. Great play on Friday, great play on Monday, great option trade. I don't have the option trade in here, but call it a great put in this. Anyway, stock close here, gap down. So this was Thursday. Thursday night into Friday, fell on Friday, fell on Monday. So you see here this nice sell-off, the follow through the continuation, and this is Baidu. So again, I get up in the morning, and I look and see, and I see Baidu is here, or thereabouts. Actually, when I got up in the morning, Baidu was like around here, and then it fell like $10 in the morning. It just kept falling, falling, falling. 
So again, you look at this and using my system, you would rate it. And if it rated good enough to short, you would short it. And it did. Boom, boom. And you could have done it two days in there. Now here was yesterday's buy do. This was a day trade. Option was already on from Friday. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, drop. Boom. You could have shorted it here very quickly out of the gate. Boom, got the drop. So if you look at this here, okay, this around here is around estimate around 121-ish, okay? Stock fell, drop, 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 dropped, okay? Down in here, 118 and change. So this was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful drop off in the Baidu. So you would short this, okay? Again, you're not, you're not looking to, you're not looking to go long this in this bounce, you would be looking to short this, okay? And this was yesterday. But you could have done this Friday. You could have done this Monday. Again, I don't know what this is doing today. But you wouldn't go long by it. You would either short it or you would do nothing, okay? So again, the strictness of the system and following the system and, and, and looking at it and saying, okay, I definitely see what's happening here. I understand it. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to follow it through. And that's the best thing that you can do, okay? Strict, 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 strict. And I know that there's so many, so much different information out there. And again, going back to price forecasting, I focus on technicals. If you are a person that likes to read the news, or sometimes you see a gap, or you see a stock move, and you say, "Well, the earnings, the earnings were really good on this, but it, but it fell." Oh, I think I'm going to buy it. No, you can't trade based on news or fundamentals. You have to trade based on the price action because that's what's real and that's what's happening live. Now, sometimes the news or the price or the price action will match up. Sometimes the fundamentals will match up with the price action, but not all the time, not all the time. And that's why it is very, very important, okay, when you're looking at something to be accurate. And for me, price action, because it's instantaneous, tells me what I need to know, okay? So I know people love fundamentals, and I know they love news and stuff like that, but you can't, you can't predict using fundamentals where something's going to go you can using price, and it's live price. Okay, we all can see whatever Baidu is trading at today. There's nothing, there's nothing that we don't know. We can see it wherever it's trading. Everybody can pull up their platforms and see it. Whereas news events, things that happen in earnings reports, there's there's all kinds of other things going on behind the scenes that we don't know, and we're not privy to that information. So very difficult to make decisions based on that kind of information. Okay. Anyways, here was the pl first play in Baidu. The short was 121, boom, 1,000 shares, exit 1910, even though this ended up going down to 1850 and change, 2100 out of the gate. So again, your risk is determined based on each trade that you take. You size yourself, it could be a different share quantity, but you're always looking to size yourself with the monetary risk the same, whether it's a dollar, whether it's two dollars, whatever you want to risk, okay? So again, this is determined by the size of your account and how much you want to risk. So if your account has ten thousand dollars in it, I would say risking two thousand dollars would be too much. I'd say if you have ten thousand dollars in an account, maybe you want to risk five hundred dollars, okay? And in this case here, if you had done the buy now and risk five hundred bucks, boom, you got a drop, you would have made five hundred bucks, give or take, depending on where you got filled out. Okay? So this is a good trade. And it doesn't even look like much. It's just boom, boom, boom. Literally, you were in it and you were out of it in less than five minutes. And that is what I do very well. And I'm looking for this every day, okay? KSS was very similar to that today too. Now there was a second play in Baidu because it happened to fall all day. I'm gonna go back to the daily chart in a minute. The dream target for Baidu yesterday was 117. It basically got there. It ended up, I think the low of the day was 117.11 which was very late into the day, but there was a second entry in this, 119.30, short, 2,000 share risk, exit 117.50, bucks. So again, you can see how the numbers can come when you have stocks, one, that move, two, you get the direction right, and three, with size. Most of my trades are shorts. What percentage, I, I don't know off the top of my head, it's more than 50%, more than 60%, more than 70%, a big percent. Not all of my trades are shorts. I've had more longs in the market this year than, than I can even name. Apple we did that was a long when it had earnings a couple, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. But most of the stocks that I do are shorts. I don't know the exact percentage. Let me go back here to the daily. 
So again, this was yesterday. So you did the first one, boom, you get out. You could be done. But this had a second one and later down and it was obvious it was gonna get to the dream number and it basically did. So you could have done a second trade in this here. So again, it's rare that I'll look to do something a second time or even trade all day, but sometimes it's just there, it's screaming at you and you just take it, okay? Now, number two, what do you need to be successful? You need a mentor to follow. So, you know, you can trade by yourself completely alone in your own world, but I will tell you that you have to have a strong personality, you have to be very strong-willed, you have to be emotionally strong. It's hard to do that for many, many people. It's easier to follow someone else. Someone else helps you focus. Someone else gives you the confidence and conviction to say, okay, yes, I like Baidu, Melissa likes Baidu, it's good. And that is one of the benefits of being in the live trading room with me. So having a mentor to call the live trades to say 10 by 30 or whatever the numbers are when I give them, when I call the trades live, helps you. It makes it easier for you. A lot of people lack confidence in their ability to trade, even people that trade and risk money every day for years. Some longer than I'm even alive. Okay? So... Again, having someone to follow that's very good at what they do, it just makes it easier for you. And anything that you can do to make it easier for you, trust me, you want to do. So this is a journey that if you start out and you're learning from someone and you have a mentor, it makes it easier for you. It doesn't mean that you're going to be with that person forever. It doesn't mean that you can't trade by yourself at some point. But at the beginning, it definitely helps. You're gonna have a learning curve, everybody does. There's no one that knows my system but me unless they've done my class. So the thing is that even if you've been trading for a long time and you come and learn from me, you're gonna learn gaps in a new way. And so there's a learning curve, okay? How long it takes you to learn it, one day, one week, one month, one year, is totally up to you. But the idea of having a mentor and someone you can call on and talk to and email to, to ask questions and follow and get the calls like Baidu, it, it helps. Okay, it just makes it easier for you because there's nothing that you're gonna do to take away the fact that when you place a trade, you're taking risk. Whether you're risking $1,000 a trade or $2,000 a trade or 100 bucks, it's still money and you're putting it on and you're placing the live trade on and therefore there's a chance that you could lose. Yes, you can make money, but there's always a chance you can lose. And so it's a fear factor for people. And so when they are, when they have somebody that's helping them and giving them the confidence and conviction and calling the live trades, again, just, just saying, yes, that's good too. I knew I liked that. And now that Melissa likes it, I definitely know I like that one. It, it just helps you. It helps you mentally because there's no way you're going to get around the fact that you have to take risk. But to me, I call it calculated risk. But that's where the system comes in. That was number one. If I rate the gap and I rate it rates well, like buying you, I say, well, the system tells me it's good. So therefore, I have the confidence in the system. That's why that's number one. Number two is the mentor and the focus. Now, for me, it's just the personal focus that I have. Uh, Amanda has a question. Melissa, listening the first time, never saw anybody with so much confidence. Listen, Ahmed, do you think that I could go on live national TV and talk about the market if I wasn't a confident person? I am a very confident person, but you know, again, I've been doing this same thing and nothing else for 11 years, but thank you for the compliment. Um, it's the stock swoosh. It's just the stock swoosh, okay? Um, and again, these trains here are on the one minute. This is a one minute chart. This is a daily chart. So I rank the gap on the daily chart and then this here too is the one. So we're, we're looking at a big time frame to determine the directional bias for the rating. But then when I'm taking the entries, I'm getting in on the one minute, okay? Because again, we're day traders. As a day trader, you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. You have to be flat before four o'clock Eastern time, okay? So you have to be, you have to maneuver yourself. And we're obviously, we're looking to take, you know, size. So we're in and out on the one. And it was getting back to what I was saying here about education. It's, there, you have to look for value in the education that you're getting. And I, and I get this all the time. In fact, I was so honest with the one guy that said to me last week, he said, oh, do, 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 do. I said, you know what? This, it gets tiring because there's many educators out there. Obviously, there's people talking today. You have to ascertain yourself if you think that person knows what they're doing or not. There's no guarantees when you sign up for a class and you pay for it. 
There's no guarantees in life. There's no guarantees when you take a trade either. And you must know that going into it. So you are either going to create your own system from scratch, which is what I did, which was a long, hard, tough journey, mind you, okay? Or you are going to learn from someone else. The fact is that there are people that know how to trade. There are people that know how to trade that actually teach people. There are people out there that are successful doing this. And you can find them and you can learn from them. It doesn't mean that everyone is. But it's the same for anything you do, okay? When you have to think about it just in very common sense terms, just because you've had bad experiences in the past, if you've taken classes and spent money and you haven't learned anything from those people, it doesn't mean that every person out there is bad. It doesn't mean you're never going to learn from anyone. That's ridiculous, okay? So again, you have to think about it in a very common sense manner and say, okay, either I'm going to create my own system or I'm going to learn from someone else. And you may have to go to several different people before you find a good person. So every once in a blue moon, someone does find me who has never traded in their life. They come to me, they have a good experience, they do well right away. That is rare, okay? I have people, a lot of them that come to me that have done classes in the past and lost money, they didn't learn anything, and then they come and do my class. So, you know, if, if you're the rare bird out there that you've never traded before, you're in luck because you're not going to learn any of the bad habits you, the gap fill stuff that somebody else had said, you're not going to learn any of that stuff that does not work. But that doesn't happen all the time. It is rare. But the people that do come to me that don't know anything at all really have a great shot because they don't have any bad habits. Now, if you've traded in the past and you have bad habits, you kind of have to just wipe them off and say, Whoop, I'm just going to move on. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to let this whole thing go. I'm going to just open myself up to a whole new world of thinking. And I'm going to trust that this person, Melissa, knows what she's doing. And then you do it, okay? The higher choice really, though, is to learn because it does make it easier for you. It's like, again, you can't be in my head. So the closest thing to being in my head would be to do the class, okay? And so, you know, that's where you learn, you learn the information and you learn the system. So if you're a beginner, it does not matter at all. You can be a beginner and know nothing and I can teach you how. It's really the crux of everything I do is the rating system, which is a 26 point system. And again, I get this question often, how long does it take? It's really up to you. You know, it's, it's how often it's gonna take you to pick up the information and do it. You know, I do think it's important to be in the trading room every morning, Monday through Friday. I do think it's important to, to pay attention in the class, to ask questions. You know, very, it's interesting, you know, at this point in my life, I've taught so many people of so many different ages and so many different walks of life. I've had the business now for seven years plus. You know, make it fun. You know, going back to school, it, it, you know, it's fun. It is fun, okay? As adults, we say, well, gosh, I have to go back to school. I have to learn this thing. I hate this thing. No, make it fun. Listen, if you're going to make money, it is fun. So put the time, put the effort, put the energy, and put the money into it because you have to do this thing and you have to embrace it and say, I'm embarking on something new. It's going to change my life. I don't know where this is going to lead. Maybe I'll do it and I'll work for myself. Maybe I'll be successful and I can quit my job and do it full time. Maybe I'll do it when I retire. Maybe I will do it and have extra money that I can go on a vacation. Maybe I'll meet somebody. Maybe I'll meet a girlfriend. Maybe I'll meet a boyfriend. Maybe I'll get a job on Wall Street. You don't know. You have no idea what doors will open for you once you step into a new world. And so you really have to step outside of the box of yourself if you've been doing this and losing and look at it in a new way. Uh, you know, it's it's like people have this stigma around trading that I've been doing this for a while and losing. That it's a stigma of losing. I wrote an email about this the other day. People can, when they think of trading, they have to think of it about winning. You can't think of it about losing. Now, every time I take a trade, I don't ever think that I'm going to lose. Now, while there's a chance that I could, my confidence is such that I don't think that I will ever lose. But I put the stop in. I put the stop. So the stop is like the insurance. It protects me. Because the trade might lose. And some trades I take do lose. But I never think that they're going to. If I thought the trade was going to lose, I wouldn't take it. You understand what I'm saying? So that's where the confidence comes in. That's where the conviction. I call it 100% conviction. I don't believe that any trade I'm going to take is going to, it's going to fail. But I put the stop in just in case it does. But I don't think and think and think and think and worry about it. Okay? You take the trade. You put the stop on. You let the trade play out. And it goes where it is. Okay? I... Do I use scanning? I don't use any artificial intelligence. The most intelligent thing I could use is my brain, which is me. Uh, scanning, I just have the scanner that comes with the platform. You can buy an extra scanner if you want, but I found that it's duplicates. 
I don't use Bollinger Bands. I use very few indicators, just what I have on the chart. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Okay. Uh, and number three, number three, number three, number three, last but not least is motivation. Okay. So you must be motivated. This comes within you. Maybe you're motivated to make money because you want to buy nice stuff, a new car, clothing, whatever, go on a vacation. Maybe you're motivated because you hate your job. Maybe you're motivated because you work too many hours. And trading, really, the market closes at 4. I mean, even if you wanted to trade all day, at 4 o'clock, you are done. So, I mean, there's many reasons why people embark on this path. For me, it was pretty much all of the above. I'd like to make a lot of money. I was tired of working too many hours at my real estate job, doing mortgages. <coughs> and I didn't want to work seven days a week anymore. I liked working for myself, so it was like everything. And I wanted an endless stream of unlimited income where the more that you risk in the market, the more that you can make. Of course, you have to be good. But I do think it's important to know why are you doing this? Decide what you want. What is your goal? What is your motivation? How much money do you want to risk? Okay, how much money do you want to make? And what's it going to take for you to get there? And what are the proper steps? Like write it down. Again, I, I said this earlier about 200000 a year. Again, you may need to make more money than this to support yourself. Maybe you need to make less. But either way, whatever the amount is, I say break it down because it seems sometimes so overwhelming for people. It's funny. It's, there's no amount of numbers that you could say to me that I would think is overwhelming. But I, I, I live in New York, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of wealthy people that live in Manhattan. So, you know, to say 250000 a year, that doesn't even cut it in New York, okay? So it's, you know, you could, you might live in a place that you only need to make 50,000 a year. Okay. Whatever it is, take that amount that you need to pay your bills, have a nice life and be relaxed in your trading with your risk and divide it per month and per week and per day, whatever amount that is for you. Okay. And it will vary from person to person. Then you take the amount of money that you can put in a trading account and you say, okay, well, if you need to make $1,000 a day and you only have $5,000 in a trading account, how are you going to do it? Well, you're not going to be able to do it right away. You're not going to be able to risk 25% of your account or 20% of your account every day. So you're going to say, well, I have to grow this 5,000 account into a 25,000 account. And then I have to grow the 25,000 account into a 50,000 account. And how long is it going to take me to do that? And how much am I going to need to start? And this is where the plan of action comes into place, deciding where you want to be. So many people want to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Wait till they have this much money and this much money. They'll be waiting forever. I'll be long gone before those people are even have the money that they need to go. You start where you are right now. You learn it. You do it. You grow it. And the confidence that we're talking about comes by then looking back and saying, I did it. If you started training today and you took a $2,000 account and you doubled that account in a week, and if you triple that account in a month, you'd say, I did it. A round of applause for me. And that is how you get to the point where you build your own confidence. And then you don't need me anymore, okay? But until you get to that point, until you're there on your own, until you're fully independent, and that's why it's good to have someone in your life that will help motivate you, that will help teach you, and will help guide you. Um... Da, 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 da. John is talking about his girlfriend. Thank you, Sean. Anyways, let's talk about Tiva. This was another trade here. I'm just going to quickly go through this <coughs> because I do want to bring up HD. Tiva was a trade back from, this was the Monday, two, two Mondays ago. Not this past Monday, but the previous Monday. Stock drop fell, boom. You could have shorted it here right out of the gate again, and you could have shorted it again here. You see this beautiful sell-off that happened in this stock. So here is Tiva on the daily chart. Again, it's a gap. Always looking for the gap down. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Okay, so again, this is a short. This down here is the volume. So you can see Tiva had a lot of volume on the day. Now I'm using this as an example in this to show you <coughs> how size can make a big difference. So this was a cheap stock. 7,000 shares, you say, whew, that's a lot. Now, the irony here is the stock ended up going ridiculous. So it went more than a dollar or I think 11.90 or something was a low from the entry of 12.82. But the quick morning exit was around 12.60, 12.58-ish. I think it went down to 12.55 in the a.m. But this stock ended up going like a, 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 almost a dollar. And 7,000 shares is a big size. But I'm showing you here how you can play the morning with size, make 1,000 bucks, make 1,800 bucks, and be done quick. So see how the size here 
and the exactness here of seeing it, predicting it's going to drop, you can make this kind of money very quickly. Although, as you see here, if you held this, this did really go, and you could have made well more than that. I mean, you could have made almost seven grand from the entry. So, you know, you never know. But I think it's better to do two trades like in the buy do rather than take a morning trade and hold it or you take the morning trade and you get out. But even a small move like this, not even 30 cents, you can make money, okay? Anyways, it's about the strategy. It's about the focus having a mentor and that's how you're going to become successful and the motivation. And the motivation really comes within you. But a lot of times when you get down, you have to kind of motivate yourself. So I say, think about the things I said today. Think about if trading's for you. If you have questions, you can call me. Um, the website's www.thestockswish.com, Ahmed. Anyways, there are challenges to trading, of course, but there are also many benefits. And for me, I always felt that the benefits far exceeded the challenges. And I don't think there's anything in life that's not challenging where you could make a lot of money. I mean, let's just get real. So anything that you want to do, if you really have the goal that you want to work for yourself, work from home, make a lot of money, it's, it's not going to just fall into your lap out of the sky, okay? Even if you come to me, you must listen to what I say. There is a cost for my class. It's an entire weekend out of your life that you have to listen and learn. So, you know, there are things that you have to do. There's effort that you have to put into it. But ultimately, I say if you're doing this for yourself, if you want to be successful, if you want to work for yourself, it's a great career. So my system is called the Golden Gap. It's a class that I do once a month. You will learn the 26-point professional bearish gap rating system, and the purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade, when, where to get in, and what direction, and it predicts a directional bias in a stock. This is the meat and potatoes of what you learn from me and how I call the trades in the live room. So the next class is June 8th and 9th. It's $59.99 US dollars. Class is online. If you want to sign up, you must email me, Melissa at the stockswoosh.com. I also do a trends course. The trends class is the 10th. You can save, sign up for both and save $500. Class tuition is $64.99 for both two classes. Class is online. I'm doing a Memorial Day offer through May 28th. You receive the options newsletter and the live trading room free with the class through 831. So you cannot join my live room unless you do the class. So this is a nice offer because you'd get the entire summer. You get the options letter, which I've had some really nice calls in. Baidu was a put as well as the day trade. You would also get the room Monday through Friday, and you'd learn and do the class June 8th and 9th. But the deadline for this is May 28th. It's the day after Memorial Day. Um, here, Ahmed, I'll, I'll write it in the room. Just here, here's my email. Sorry, I do tend to talk fast. Um, just here's another testimonial from Marty, and we talked about chunking it out, we talked about education, less stressful when you follow someone, and again, you know, the idea of spending money on education is very important because you'll lose it in the market, and you'll lose an endless amount in the market. Um, any questions here? Here, let me pull up HD. Can everybody see the chart? Actually, I did me up. Let me know if you can see HD. Just talk about this really quick. Actually, hold on. I want to see what the market's doing right now. Sorry. Oh, my lanty. Uh, here, here, let's talk about the market because I want to talk about this right now. And then we'll go back to HD. Here's a great example. Here's a great example. So you cannot go long every gap up. Perfect example today. Market and the spy gapped up. Gapped up over the eight period moving average, which is the black line here. Gapped up, and you think, well, this should be, this should be at 289 if it was getting bought by who? Institutions, but it's not. It had a baby move, a baby move in here. So, on a gap up like this, you say, wow, look, but it's not going anywhere at all. It looks dead, dead as a doornail. I wouldn't be surprised if we close looking like this. But, anyways, noon, almost 12 o'clock here, after a day where the market gapped up, you say, well, okay, so you can't go long every gap up, and you can't short every gap down. So that's why the rating system is critical. Now, we'll go over to the question of the gap fills. And actually, let me look at this here, too. And the diamonds are falling. Let me look at Apple. Okay, let's go to HD. Um, anyways, I, someone was talking about gap fills or whatever. 
you could say this is a gap fill, but the fact is, now I'm going to take this off, pretend it's not there. Actually, let me blow it up. The fact is HD barely gapped down at all this morning. Then all of a sudden, literally like 10 minutes right before the open, the stock open was down here. So it was like one, it was almost like one seller came in and just made it open there. It quickly lifted around and got bought. So the reality was, you can call this a gap fill if you want. Again, I would never have gone long the stock today. But if, if you wanted to go long HD, again, I wouldn't go long it today. But HD is a good long, actually. Why? The stock is very strong. I'm talking about overall, looking at the bigger picture here of the stock. It's one of the strongest stocks in the market. Why? The stock made brand new all-time highs last September. The stock held up very well for the last two volatile weeks. The stock probably would have been, went back up to the highs if it wouldn't have been for the fall-off in the market with the tariff news. The reality is this is a strong stock. So it's getting bought today, but it's not a gap fill. This, people want to buy this stock. They like Home Depot. This, they, they like the company, okay? Again, whatever the earnings said, whatever doesn't matter, but the fact is institutions are in this long. So the fact that you see this today doesn't even surprise me whatsoever. In fact, I kind of predicted it in Cheddar. But the fact is that I didn't short this today, but I wouldn't go long in here either because again, I'm strict with the system and a gap down. But I might change my mind if I see a gap up in this that I like that rates will at some point between now and the next you know, couple of weeks. But you wouldn't take a new entry in this today as an overnight, as an option or anything. And I wouldn't do it as a day trade because not high level of conviction because the fact is there was a possibility that this stock could have sold off today where it opened. It did not. It did not. It got bought. But you can't say that this was a gap fill that you would have wanted to do because that just, again, makes no sense. The fact is that HD is a strong stock. The fact is that institutions are long the stock. The fact is that they bought more of the stock here today into the open. It could have gone either way. The fact is it hardly gapped down at all based on the earnings report, which actually wasn't even that bad. This stock is in an uptrend. You don't say gap fill. If you, if you are Warren Buffett and you can buy every drop off that you want to for the rest of your life and not care about whether or not it keeps falling, then go long HD today. But I can't tell you that this doesn't drop again until it goes back up to the highs. When you're an individual trader, you have to learn how to play where you're going to take a trade and it's going to be up and it's going to be up pretty quick because you don't have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of money. And even if you have a million dollars, that's still what you got. You got a million dollars. So you don't want to be down and lose all of that million until HD goes back up and, and rallies again and goes back up to the highs. So you have to be so good at taking the exact quality trade to know it's going to go right into the money. Now, again, this isn't about the fact that every trade I do does, but a lot of them do and more, way more do than don't. So that's what you have to think about because you're only one person. You're not Warren Buffett. You're not a value trader. You're not a value investor. You're an active trader. You have to look for high odds. It was better odds today to short TSS than it was to short HD. A short in this would not have worked, but not good odds to go long it, okay? And quite frankly, the market rallied this morning out of the gate and lifted this over the high, and this could have turned around if the market had fallen. Now, it did not, but again, the market lifts things when it does certain things in whether the direction is up or down, it will wiggle and jiggle and it will move certain stocks. Okay. Listen, thanks for having me, everybody. Glad we got the sound and everything right. Any quick questions here at the end? Thank you for having me, Anka. Have a wonderful seminar today. And if you're interested, again, email me at melissatthestockswoosh.com and watch me on TV. Very good. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Melissa. It was great having you on. We will look forward to having you on again in uh, one of our presentations. It was an amazing and powerful presentation, and I hope you guys, uh, if you guys get a chance,